everyone and welcome back to Historical Bell. I am Marie of Historical Bell and today I am going to be showing you how I made an 1880s styled ruffled petticoat out of bed sheets. Whenever I am starting on a new era or an era that is new to me, <laughs> uh, like the 1880s, uh, I build from the bottom up so you have to have your foundational layers uh, which I would consider to be the chemise, the corset, the bustle, and the petticoat. So I wanted to make sure that my dress had a very full soft shape and for that I was going to need to make sure that I had a petticoat coat on over the bustle. I did not have a paper pattern for this bustle, so instead I drafted one on my own. You just saw me taking measurements on my dress form, Mahilda, and I took these measurements over my foundational layers, over the corset and the bustle. The bustle is especially an important part to take into consideration when drafting a pattern for, well, a bustle dress because it's this giant thing that's in the back then you want to make sure that the fabric is going to be long enough to go over it so to get an idea of what an 1880s petticoat would have looked like i did some internet research i looked at what some other historical costumers had done to make similar garments and i kind of came up with an idea of what i wanted a smooth front with a ruffled back and that is what i am cutting out here as I said, I am making this ruffled petticoat out of bed sheets. These are cotton bed sheets that I got from different thrift stores in my local area because that is cheaper than going and buying fabric new. It is a form of recycling, so it's just, it's great all around and it makes for some really great garments. I just cut out the front piece of my petticoat here I am cutting out the back piece of the petticoat it has a slight angle on the sides of the skirt and and then smooth top and bottoms and it, this is this is cotton so it is super easy to just rip and tear to get on that grain so I have done that a lot there I was just cleaning up a little edge before I decided to cut and rip my ruffles this ended up being a petticoat with five layers of ruffles and to make each of these ruffles I cut out two strips that were the length of each bed sheets and I believe I cut them about five inches wide. Here is some great footage of me just ripping those strips. I would just make a small snip right for after I measured my five inches I would make a little snip and then just whole that fabric part it gets it so nice and straight i don't have to worry about cutting it it's faster it's more accurate it's great when your fabric actually does that not all fabrics do that uh, it depends on the fabric but this fabric did excellently here i am sewing two strips together to form one giant strip which will make one ruffle it is a very very full ruffle as they are two strips two five inch strips that are the length of the bed sheet once i sewed those two strips together to make one really really long strip i then went and i hemmed one end of it so that the the edge of the strip will be nice and finished and i don't want to do that at, before after i gather it i want to do that before i gather it because that'll make things so so much easier and so much simpler so i am now going to hem and i did a double rolled hem it's a really really nice finished hem on all of all well i was going to say all five but really i use the top of the bed sheets for the fifth ruffle so i'm going to do this on all four of them and lucky of course has to supervise what i'm doing she's the best little fabric helper ever And yes, I put my pins in backwards. I'm trying to get better at that because especially when I'm doing just straight sewing like this, it was really annoying, but I did not think of it and I'm, I wasn't going to go back and put the pins in a different way. But yeah, 
I just have a habit of doing that. I'm not sure why. After hemming that incredibly long strip of fabric and then doing that four times over, I am then going to press all of those strips of fabric so that the hem is nice and pressed. The fabric is going to be nice and wrinkle free, well, as wrinkle free as humanly possible when you're working with cotton, which it seems to wriggle so much. I didn't even bother ironing it before. As you probably noticed, it's rather wrinkly because. By the time I I would iron the entire thing, well, then there goes all my sewing time for, for the day. <laughs> and then I'm going to have to fold it back up and then put it back out. But for this, I, I really wanted to make sure that it was nice and ironed before I gathered it. Because once I gather it, there is no going back. There is no pressing that flat again. There there can be steam ironing, but it's not going. To, you're never going to be able to press it flat again. So to gather, I put in what I, uh, a running stitch with the machine. Uh, so make the tension as loose as possible on mine. That would be a five and then just run a stitch across the top, the unhemmed portion of those strips. It is in time to gather all of those strips. So laying those all out in the way that I want the strips to go on the back part and then just pulling that thread just pulling one side of that thread and gathering all, all of those strips together so that they can fit on the back of the petticoat. It took a while. I always gather a piece of fabric as tight as it will go and then I ungather it to fit the whatever it needs to fit onto. So here I have gathered it the strip as tight as it will go and now I'm going to ungather it so that I can ungather in it evenly so all the gathers will be even across the back of my fabric that will be the back of my petticoat. So there I am on the back panel with one of my strips, one of my flounces that's going to be part of the five tiered ruffle petticoat. I decided my ruffle petticoat is not going to start right at the top. I don't want to have to gather the backing and the ruffle into the waistband. That was just going to be too thick. So I decided to have a gap between the top of the petticoat and the first ruffle. As long as the first ruffle hid the first bone of my bustle, which it did. I had seen some other historical costumers and I tried to find some original examples and it seemed like this was an okay way to do it, that this is something that is acceptable, uh, the, the, there, that there being a gap is a good thing that, you know, a hundred years ago people didn't want to have to gather all that fabric into a waistband either. So I felt very secure. And confident in doing it this way and there you can see I'm using a, a quilting ruler a sewing ruler and that is going to be my uh, standard the width of that ruler is my standard width between well everything on the back of this petticoat so 
between each ruffle I'm going to use it as a measuring tool. I believe that it is four inches in width so there's going to be a four inch gap between each of these ruffles. The ruffles I cut them out to be about five inches that I want because I wanted them to be five inches. I think I gave it a little bit more room because I knew there was going to be a hem and I was going to double fold that hem which takes about an inch. Well the way I did it, it takes about an inch and I want to make sure that each of these ruffles still overlap even though I am pinning them in such a way where once they're hanging the the uneven edge is going to be hidden under the ruffle even with the ones that are below it I didn't want to take the chance of when it moves even though it's under a skirt I know I know I was just trying to finish everything really nicely so you wouldn't see any of those seams so they're going to be hidden under the ruffle so there I am I just got the first ruffle pinned into place and here I am gathering the second ruffle All right, so I got four layers of ruffles gathered and pinned to the back of the petticoat. So now I am going to sew those on. I'm going to use my sewing machine. It's going to get a little tricky because I'm going to have to cram a bunch of fabric into my machine once I get towards the middle. Of course, the ends are fine, but the middle, the middle is a little bit of a more tricky spot, but it went through fine. I didn't have any problems with it. Um, it was just really bulky and, uh, it was hard to see what I was doing at some points, but it, it all worked out fine. All right, so now is the time to attach the front of the petticoat to the back of the petticoat. I did not 
want the ruffles to be caught in that seam so I left a little bit of a gap so that I would be able to sew the front of the petticoat onto the back of the petticoat without uh, sewing down any of the ruffles. I wanted them to be very free to be able to move uh, to support the dress to give a lot of oomph and life to the back of the dress. I left a little gap at this top side seam there that I am pinning down right now because that is going to be how I get in and out <laughs> of the petticoat. That's going to be where my overlap is, where my give is. So I can get the petticoat on and off. So I'm only going to sew um, from that point downward to attach the front to the back on this section. I then did a gather stitch across the top of the back of the petticoat and I am now gathering that all together and I am so excited because I am gathering a section of fabric that already has gathered sections of fabric onto it and it's just uh, so many gathers so many so many gathers but it makes it so poofy and so fun and now I am going to cut out the waistband for the petticoat I'm making it nice and big so then I can fold under the edges and make that all super nice and clean. And of course, ironing all of that down so those creases are nice and sharp. I am now going to attach that waistband to the front and back of the petticoat so I can have a nice, you know, waistband. Nice <laughs> finished waistband to get on and off this petticoat. And I did not gather the front of the petticoat. I wanted that to be very nice and flat, but I did take two little pleats in the the front of it, uh, doing going different directions from this different sides of my belly button, because uh, it needed a little shaping to go around my waist, but I still wanted it to have a very nice flat appearance. Before I sew the waistband on officially, I'm going to try it on Mahilda just to make sure that everything is hanging right and well before I actually sew the waistband on. And oh, look at that. It's looking so good. I love those ruffles. It's, oh yes, everything I wanted. The waistband is, is on. It, it fits pretty well. Um, it is a little tight, but that's okay. I'm a little more squishy than Mahilda. I am then going to sew that waistband on. I like to top stitch my waistbands on. Everything then, you know, you can you can see exactly where that stitch is going and make sure it's really nice and close to the edge of the waistband, uh, caching all of the fabric. Now, you've probably been wondering, Marie, where's that last ruffle? You said this was five ruffles. You only showed us putting on four ruffles. Well, here you are. 
I am now putting on the last and final ruffle because the final ruffle goes all the way around the petticoat. So it is going to cover the front of the petticoat as well as the back. All the other ruffles have just been on the back of the petticoat. For this one, I used the top of the bed sheets because the top of the bed sheets had a nicer finish to them. Uh, it has a little bit of a lace insert, which I just thought was absolutely beautiful, and I wanted to display that on the front of the petticoat. The other bed sheet that I used did not have a lace insert on the uh, top of it. It just had a nice um, finished edge which I still used for the bottom of the petticoat. I just used the lace portion for the front and then I used the just nicely finished portion for the back since I couldn't get the lace one to go all the way around. Now my estimation was a little bit long for the front and back of the of the petticoat. Uh, so I am here, I'm marking that so I can snip it off. I went ahead and made it a little extra long because it's far easier to take fabric away than it is to add fabric. So I always like to estimate a little longer than necessary because that way you can just avoid disaster by a few inches. So that's what I'm doing here. I am making sure and I'm going to hem the bottom portions so that they end right above the last ruffle. The last step is to sew a hook and eye. I have a giant hook and eye that I'm going to sew onto the waistband and then, well, that's it. It'll be done. Ta-da! Here it is! In all of its ruffled glory! Oh, I was so happy with how it turned out. I love the ruffles. I think it's so fun. They're so poofy. And it's going to look great under <laughs> my engagement dress. So if you didn't have a chance to see the last video with my exciting news, I am engaged to the love of my life. And to celebrate that, I made an 1880s dress to commemorate the very, very special event. And I will be making a series, series of videos about the making of my engagement dress, this being the first one, the petticoat. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. Please like and subscribe for more content and to follow along on this journey of making my engagement dress.